Welcome everyone to tonight's Plenary Council media briefing uh, following the fourth full day of the Plenary Council final assembly here in Sydney. A warm welcome to our panellists, Bishop Michael Kennedy, Francine Parola and Sister Anne Boyd. Bishop Michael was just a short bio before we go to some questions on each. Bishop Michael was raised in rural New South Wales and worked for several years as a high school teacher before entering the seminary to become a priest ministering in country parishes in southern New South Wales. He has been Bishop of the Diocese of Armidale in northern New South Wales since 2012. Francine, with her husband Barham, was called into marriage ministry as a newlywed. Um, they are pioneers in Catholic marriage formation and innovators in applying digital technologies in their global apostolate. Francine is also a senator for Australian Catholic University and a board director of New Media Foundation Limited. Anne Boyd is a Bridgetine sister and currently the leader of the Bridgetine Southern Cross community, comprising sisters in Australia and New Zealand. She is an experienced educator and in recent years has worked in the field of ecological theology and spirituality. And I forgot to say, I'm Jenny Brinkworth from the Adelaide Archdiocese, the communications director there and also editor of the Southern Cross newspaper. But we have a few others here tonight to ask some questions, so I'm going to go straight to one of those. You're right next to me. Okay. Right. Uh, well, um, it would be keen to hear from all of you, perhaps to, to just fill us in on the outside um, where we're up to with the voting and what you can what you can reveal and tell us. That would be a good starting point and then we can go from there. Well, today we adopted a different process for working through each of the motions and the introductory statements. And uh, so there was more collaboration as moving through the day with the result that um, we, we looked at the governance aspect and at the ecological um, statement. And so there was a good deal of um, agreement with the uh, outcome. Well, the others might want to say something about this, but with the outcome that we accepted all the motions as amended in the course of the day. Yeah. Was that consultative? Or did you get to Consultative the, uh, and yeah. deliberative. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. The deliberative yeah. votes, I understand, have just been released. What if you want to talk a little bit more about what those motions were about? Yeah, sure. The, um, the ecology part, part eight, which we dealt with first, um, that I think enjoyed unanimous votes from the, from the deliberative votes. Is that right? Can somebody check the One numbers? of them, I think, yeah. yeah. Yes, it's been released. Yes, yes. they've just been released. So <laughs> it's, it's hot off the press. So. Um, there was a couple in then. There were two motions in that, and there were four in the governance, and there was um, a fair bit of... Um, just back and forwards on some of those and some am amendments made. Uh, and I would say that in some of those there was perhaps some reticence, so they weren't quite as unanimously supported. Uh, first, first to uh, just ask and uh, apologise that if I get a bit muddled and confused, it's because as well as those two deliberative votes today, We've also, there's also been many consultative votes on a number of different areas, a number of uh, amendments being proposed on a number of different areas and a lot of input and discussion on other areas as well. So um, by the end of day four or day five, wherever we are now, it can all become a bit of a jumble and mix up in the head. Uh, but yes, in, in terms of the two deliberative votes, um, the, um, the, the, uh, Integral ecology and uh, conversion, uh, consultative votes and deliberative votes, which were both held today, benefited from the new process that, that Sister Anne mentioned, uh, whereby um, rather than how we were operating earlier in the week was if anyone had any suggested changes or amendments to text that a group needed to work on that together and come up with a definite proposal uh, to then submit and each group didn't know what any other group might be submitting. Um, we, we've, cha we've, 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 changed, yeah, we've changed, yeah, we've changed to, we've changed to, yeah, the table groups. We, we've changed to a, a, a format in which everyone in the room is, is hearing what 
everyone else in the room from all the different table groups are saying. And so whilst that might be, uh, I'm sure it's a huge headache and a huge task for the steering committee and for the drafting panel, it's actually helping members of the mm -hmm. plenary council to hear what, what everyone, is, everyone else is saying. And I believe that that, that, uh, that contributed to a um, not greatly changed but, but slightly improved uh, document and uh, around um, integral ecology and conversion. And so, and so that was the particular vote that I think has got so far the one and only unanimous vote mm -hmm. out of all the consultative votes and the deliberative votes. So um, there, was a, there was a bit of a, a cheer in the room at that point. And no invalid vote, no, I think. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah. and one of the other reasons why Michael might be confused about the voting is we also have general votes. Mm -hmm. And they show the leanings of whether or not the vote will get through. So in addition to the consultative and deliberative, we initially have um, general votes that then shows the, the mood of the room and so you don't waste time putting forward motions that will not be accepted. Mm -hmm. If I could just add, just to elaborate on the changes to the process, one of the things that we're doing now is that we're going through each paragraph and if there's any concerns, um, thoughts and support or thoughts ag against it, then anybody is able to speak to that and bring those concerns to the surface. And if there is a, an amendment to be made, then that's all taken at the end of the session back to the drafting committee. And we don't do the voting straight away. They bring it back to us with mm. um, the amendments. And that's been really helpful because the introduction is in, in many of them is quite lengthy. And then there's a, you know, we've a, a motion to accept the whole introduction. So if you've got an issue with just one sentence in it, it puts you in a position where you have to kind of vote against it, even though there might be some really excellent mm. things in it, which is, I think, really what undid the part of the women that really kind of tripped us up there. Yeah. All right, we'll just go over here. Peter or Marilyn? Thank you. Um, Peter Rosengren from the Catholic Weekly uh, here. I think my question is, is first directed to you, Bishop, but anyone can respond, um, and that is that, uh, as I understand it, the May uh, 2022 minutes of the, ABC, uh, the ACBC Plenary Committee uh, noted that um, they'd received observations from Rome uh, responding to the Life from the Southern Cross report, um, and uh, in, I think, Archbishop Anthony Fisher's uh, intervention today in Sydney, he mentioned also that the Holy See had critiqued the report. Um, and in his comments, he said, um, just reading from his intervention here, in particular, the Holy See had noted uh, the horizontal and vertical dimensions of the church as taught by the Second Vatican Council, and it had judged that the report and that kind of thinking was almost entirely horizontal. It was a very critical sort of assessment, I, I think, if I understand his uh, intervention correctly. Um, he, he then went on to say, in emphasising the priesthood of all the baptised over the ordained priesthood and the people of God over the hierarchical church, uh, such writers have distorted a genuinely Catholic ecclesiology, which is always both and, not either or. And he went on in that vein. So I, I, I guess my question is, um, are you able to enlighten us on the observations that the Vatican made on the light from the Southern Cross report, um, informal well, the cup size to uh, speak? Uh, my comment on that would be that uh, I think the observations from, from the Holy See were around um, uh, inviting, inviting us to ensure that uh, any the uh, the contents of of the report and the recommendations mm. of the report uh, that and in any implementation of those that they really need to be within uh, a, an a, a proper understanding of ecclesiology and of the church mm. so that basically whilst we can we can benefit from um, uh, uh, from the 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 models of governance that that exist in the in the in the world outside the church, um, any any approaches and, and methods of governance which we introduce 
have to be in keeping with our, our ecclesiology. And uh, whilst we can, we can, we can benefit and, and learn from, from, uh, from others, uh, we, we do still need to, uh, um, to ensure our integrity and our identity as a church mm. rather than as a, a, a corporation or a government or a business or whatever it might be. Um, are the, uh, will the, the observations from Rome be published at any stage, made public? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, re I, re I really, I really, I can't comment on that. I really can't answer. I, d I just don't know. All right. Thank you very much. Who would like to go next? Do you want to go over there? Yeah, um, can you talk about what the plan is for tomorrow? So I'm losing my voice. <coughs> Too much talking. Uh, What's the schedule looking like tomorrow? And are we going to have early? We're we going to see early the revised part four motion on women and men in the church. So we've received um, printed copies of the revised um, text. I believe that will be published online for the public mm. at overnight some stage overnight, perhaps. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I think our first task in the morning after prayer after mass is to look at. The remaining part, which is seven, I think, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. Six or seven? Six, six. six. It's six, I think, <laughs> um, on uh, looking at formation. So we've done we've done some initial discussion of that, but then we hit five thirty and we had to pack up. So we've got to do our, continue our discussions on those on that one, and then um, we'll probably get the part five back redrafted, and we'll be voting on that, and then we'll probably turn to the women's issue, and then there's a few other little bits and pieces voting on the closing of the plenary on the resolution of the previous plenary or something like that so I don't know can you that's good I think that's right that's that's more or less Saturday's business We're trying to get all the rest Friday's done tomorrow business. Friday's business yeah. but the, the voting on the previous plenary is Saturday morning is I think okay. yeah I think so if I, if I could just return to the previous question about the light from the Southern Cross it's just occurred to me that um, given that the lights from the Southern Cross has been such an important factor in the life of the church in the last two years, and, it, and it's proposing significant uh, changes to church governance and, and so on, and we've had the R Rome respond, apparently, um, making observations on some of the propositions that are incorporated from it, um, you would think that it would be a good idea in the interest of the church to, m to make those publicly available for consideration by the, the whole church, the, the baptised laity and, and the clergy and everyone else. Um, there's no, no chance that those can be made public at some stage in the future for all of us to look at and consider. Uh, just a clarification, the, the, the observations from Rome weren't on... Uh, it wasn't going through the various recommendations and making comments on specific recommendations. Right. It was more a general overall observation. On some aspects of the report. Yes. And, and uh, I would agree that uh, it would make... Uh, um, I mean, there's, there's nothing in there that is sort of top secret or anything like that, so... Um, I uh, I would say so. I I don't think there's a, there's not that I can recall from the May plenary. There was a, there's not not a decision made about sharing or, or not sharing. So that I'm sure that's something that, that that the conference will look at. Thank you. If I can come back to the the um, the revised uh, text that we have now for the uh, for the section the part on uh, on a woman and man. Um, again, we we only just received the text before before going to celebrate mass and then straight from there to here so I haven't read it either mm -hmm. but um, but I'm I, I'm very confident that 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 what occurred yesterday and, and that process um, but the, the the deliberative vote um, uh, failing to get the the number it needed and then the the discussions and uh, and discernment that took place after that, and the input from many people about that, I'm very confident that we're going to get uh, a much better mm -hmm. uh, a much better.
text and therefore a much better section and outcome on that. And, and I see that as part of the Plenary Council working. Mm. Yes. yes. It's definitely um, the, um, the rhythm of the, of the group. Uh, and I think yesterday was a gift in many ways. Uh, there was division, there was anger, there was pain. Uh, but in the life of the church, all of those things have their place. And in that sense, it was a gift because we changed our approach today, changed our methodology and um, came to a more collaborative way of working. And so had yesterday not happened, we might be still struggling along in much the same way as we reached that climax yesterday. So I'm, I think uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of creativity in chaos mm. and that sort of was a gift in that sense. And I would just add that uh, even though the process was sort of working up until um, Wednesday, there was still a sense that we hadn't really had a chance to explore the issues in depth. So there was, uh, you know, the votes got through, but they weren't getting through with, um, with I guess, a, a, you know, with a, they had the majority, but it wasn't an out ra outstanding majority. And that kind of reflects, I suppose, um, that there's a significant number of the members who are disquieted by some aspects. And so it's always, well, you don't want everything to necessarily be 100% in favour. I think if we're leaving a lot of people unsettled with the decision that's come, that's something that needed to be addressed. And and we've had this um, three parts to the vote, you know, uh, Platchet, Platchet Juxtamodum and non Platchet, which <coughs> I'm not going to do the translations for you, but but there was no opportunity when you got a lot of people voting, a lot of assenting but with reservations, there was no opportunity to actually well address the reservations so that they might be converted into a, an assent, a to, to a Platchet. And now I think we're addressing the reservations before we vote, so that's valid. Yeah, just um, reading through the motions that are happening, sorry, that have come from the governance and the kind of ecology question, there's, and there's lots of you know, roundtables and commissions and um, councils and all that kind of thing, and, and one of the great goals of the plenary is that to make the church kind of a more Christ-centred and missionary church. Is there a danger, do you think, that some of these motions might make the church more bureaucratic and less missionary in nature? I think it depends on who is involved. And that's why I was, I was very much in favour of the notion of a round table. Uh, there was an alternative motion to that. Uh, because it does recommend that all church organisations be represented. So to that extent, it would be far more synodal and um, not hierarchical in that sense. I mean, the task is to be convened by three groups uh, with others in the church. But um, I, I would be hopeful that it is a very genuine... Uh, it would not be like this, <laughs> an assembly which has been built up over five years, but it would be a listening to each other about where we are in church and um, one thing that is sort of lacking in what we're doing at the moment is a recognition of the church on the margins. Uh, there are so many church agencies that are the face of the church for so many people, Catholics and others, and in some way we're not honouring that in this gathering. Not that we're not... Um, wishing to honour them but it's not there's not the expression of that appreciation and I think a round table would be a place where that could could be um, a focus and we could strengthen our missionary aspect in that type of gathering yes <laughs> uh, it's often the case that that, that, that you hear one comment that somebody makes or you read one little thing in a text and, and that, and that uh, very much affects your own thinking and discernment. And so something I, I heard uh, today in one of the interventions around governance uh, was, uh, was someone from one of the Eastern Rite churches who, who said uh, that they, of course, are very well practised in synodality for a long, long time. And he said, synodality 
is an expression of a communion of love between the one and the many and between the many and the one. And that, uh, that ties in very well also. I think that's what Pope Francis is expressing when, when he says that synodality is the people of God, the lay faithful, uh, the religious, the priests, the bishops and the Bishop of Rome all listening to each other and listening to the Holy Spirit. And so uh, it's very important. I, I, I think if, if, if what comes out of the Plenary Council around governance uh, helps us to go more deeply into that true sense of synodal synodality, it will be a, a, a very advantageous, great for the church. Um, but yes, I agree, You're, you are right. There is a risk that uh, that committees and commissions and round tables won't automatically achieve that. Um, but they, they can achieve that if, uh, they can help to achieve that if they're, if they're, approach, if they're approached correctly. Another comment today that someone made uh, from the floor was reminding us that, uh, that Pope Francis had said that, that, that all ecclesiastical reform must be for the purpose of mission. And so uh, if, 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 if any governance reform that, that, that emerges from the Plenary Council uh, helps us to go deeper into synodality and contribute to the mission of the church, well, then that's, that's a great outcome. But it won't happen automatically, and committees won't automatically guarantee it. I think Mark's got one more. Uh, how long have we got? Oh, about five, seven, five minutes. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, snappy. We started a bit late. <laughs> Sister Anne, the, um, uh, the motion that addresses um, caring for our... For our caring for creation mm -hmm. um, what is that you know m in material terms uh, what does the church passing this motion going going to mean for helping the planet well to the ex the recommendation is that everyone sign up to the loud auto C platform mm -hmm. which is a seven-year process and it has seven components to it and they cover many aspects of, of living not just church living, but living. And if dioceses, parishes, schools, other organisations all work through the process of that platform over the seven areas, mm. then I think um, we will enter into an ecological conversion, which is basically understanding that the human is not the centre of this planet. This planet supports the human. And so there's a mutuality there that if we really enter into the call to understand integral ecology, we find ourselves in the community of life rather than above the community of life. And, and we would change our behaviour if we follow through with that platform. It's a big ask. It's a very big ask. But every little bit helps. And ecology and economics... Um, education, there's, I can't recall the seven platforms, the mo seven elements at the moment, but um, it really covers so many areas, family life, so many areas of our being. And if we, if we do address those, then the planet will be rejoicing. Wonderful. Uh, Bishop Michael, um, the, uh, I was talking to Bishop Charles from, from Darwin about pastoral and governance side of, of being a bishop in the outback. So with your experience, uh, I, look, I'm, and I'm not sure which exact motion he might have been talking to, perhaps you can fill us in there, but I'd be interested on your reflections and with your outback remote experience, some of the things that he was talking about, um, engaging Indigenous communities, um, you know, the pastoral side of the, the church in a very different way than we see in capital cities in Australia? In some ways, the... Uh, uh, in some ways, the, the approach to governance that, uh, that is being discussed and part of the Plenary Council 
much of which is already occurring. In some ways, when you're in a, a small regional or remote diocese, that, that gets very difficult um, in terms of uh, resourcing that properly and, 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 and the personnel to be able to be uh, to assist on in boards and so on and that type of thing. But on another level, because it's smaller numbers of people in smaller communities, in some ways it's actually easier. And it, and it happens a bit more naturally in a less formal way. So it might not happen exactly the way that it's been discussed in the plenary council and, and, and outlined as to, as to how, how that should happen, but it, so but it is happening organically and naturally. For flexibility, not, you know, um, you know the, the, so the, the, the flexibility ac uh, aspect is really what I'm trying to get at, is how flexible can you be? Well, you have to be very flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I think you referred to the spirit of it, yeah. that m making sure the spirit of what uh, you were trying to achieve. Yes, and that look, and there's an yeah. awareness of that on the floor in the plenary council as well, and there's been quite a lot of mention of that, that uh, this country is a big place and the dioceses differ, differ greatly from place to place, and, uh, and, and much has to be approached. Uh, the principles have to be applied in a local context in the way that... Um, that that you are able and in the way that best suits. Um, that's um, it's a pl comment applies not just to the governance but to actually all of the mm -hmm. different parts. My initial reaction was great disappointment with the document when it came out. It just seemed like five years and this is the best we can come up with. It's a lot of general motherhood statements. But I actually think it's possibly better because it does allow for that creativity and flexibility in how it's applied because we've got a very a quite a diverse, uh, you know, across the country, very different, different settings, different needs, uh, different, uh, you know, a, a <coughs> rural diocese like Wilcania Forbes um, is a completely different situation to a big diocese like Sydney. So I think sometimes actually being a little bit more general, as frustrating as that might be, and like, can we get a really specific action on that, on you know, that we can vote on, um, is actually would work against us as a sort of united. Um, kind mm. of a, a church for the nation. Mm. Good point. And actually it was Bishop Gauchy's plea that we adopt the spirit mm. of the things and we don't mm. be prescriptive about how that happens. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Adrian, did you have a question? I'm sure you do. Um, I came in late, so I just came in early to answer, but I was just aware that today's session has been put on a bit more work than, than normal. And I was speaking to someone in the middle of the day and they said there was a real bug earlier on, but it's been taking on a little bit more work a little bit of fatigue perhaps getting into doing big things back to back to back and can we has any amount of people failed towards the end of the day? Uh, well we did have a vote on that whether or not we've got green and red cards so that we we could show green or red cards about were we too tired to carry on the green cards won so on we went and actually just the last half hour was quite animated really so um, because it was table discussion, and I think that mm. we always get a bit more animated when the tables are talking to, to themselves. Um, so, yeah, there was a tiredness, but we overcame it, I think. I was reflecting on that very same thing myself um, late this afternoon, early this evening, and it did occur to me uh, that the Holy Spirit is often at work very powerfully when we are at our weakest <laughs> when like when we're tired like I noticed a, a buzz come back at the end of the day so and I've noticed that uh, in my own life as well as a Christian and as a priest and as a bishop it's it's often uh, that's when grace and the Holy Spirit kick in <laughs> and it's a long day but it's not all that late. I mean, it's not midnight. <laughs> As opposed to the steering steering committee and the writing people, they're working. I don't know how long. Yeah, yeah very late. Um, I think a really good indication is just some of the humour that's coming back into the room. So I think tomorrow we're going to see like table competitions going on. Archbishop Peter Comensoli has already claimed he has the best table. It's the funnest table, and you should everybody should go and join that. My table's talking about how can we gamify this? Can we like make this double jeopardy? Who gets their votes in fastest? Like hit the buzzer, and I think that might be something for the steering committee to, to incentivise. Just bring a bit of gamification in it. We'll get through this. Yeah. So someone just said like it, it could be 
boring being on the same table, but in some ways now it's mm. got a bit more exciting because you want to have the best table. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all we're all making for that. <laughs> your table, what? I've, I'm on a wonderful table. I didn't, I haven't yet claimed it to be the best, but I might do that tomorrow. Mm. But um, I, there's diverse diversity at the tables, and I think the table conversations, well, for me, very rich. In the first assembly online, I found that too, and again this time, very much. I guess finally, just do you feel now that it's kind of all coming to an end too soon? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a no from me. <laughs> All right, well, I think unless anyone's got a burning question, um, that was great. A lovely perspective. Thank and thank you very much for joining us. And uh, yeah, wish you well for the last day and a bit. Yep. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thank, thank you. you.